This has been the number one request feature by our users, and we've just released it. Up till now, you were able to use One Home products to modernize your smart home by bringing the power of Apple Home, Google Home, and other smart assistants to your smart home. But there was a missing piece. Customers always pointed out that they would like to have more flexibility when creating complex automations, they would like it to run locally and have full control over it. Because of this feedback, we wanted to create a truly powerful automation module that would fill in the missing piece. With your help, we're proud to announce One Home Automations. Here's what I'll show you. How to create an advanced automation, how to know which automations are running and when, how to reuse different automations between projects or even the ones created by the One Home community, a deep dive into everything the One Home automations can do, and what we're planning for the future. Let's begin. Let's create an away automation. We're going to listen for a Kinex push button event. Afterwards, we're going to turn off all the lights and all the non-essential sockets. Depending on the time of day, we're going to either open or close the blinds. We're going to wait for five minutes and make sure the garage door lock is locked and the sauna is off. For the name, let's choose away. We have multiple options how to create triggers. For this particular case, we're going to use the KNX event. We're going to select data received from KNX. And we're going to listen for a group address telegram. We're going to select the TP bus. It's going to be DPT type one. And since we already previously imported our ETS project, we can simply search for our OA scene KNX group event. Date, save. Now this automation is going to be triggered once the One Home server receives a group address 001. For the next step, we're going to add an action block. We're going to add an action, type change device state since we want to turn off all lights. We're going to select a device. Under general, we have here all lights, which is uh, configured already in KNX. And we're going to select the action on off, false, in order to turn off the light. We can also use here the shortcut to select another device, for example, our general non-essential sockets, and turn them off as well. Save it. And now once this automation is triggered, we're going to turn off all lights and all non-essential sockets. For our next block, we're going to add a conditional to check whether it's between seven in the morning and seven in the evening in order to either open or close the blinds. Add a condition block. For the condition, we can use anything available in the system. In this particular case, we're going to use the system time. We're going to use the system time hour. Here, we're going to check if the current time is greater than or equal to seven in the morning. And now let's check if it's also less than or equal to seven in the evening. That's it. Now we're checking if the time is between seven in the morning and seven in the evening. Next, we're going to change the blind state. If it's between seven in the morning and seven in the evening, let's open the blinds to let the sun shine in for the plants. I'm going to add an action block. For the action, we're going to change device state, select our device under general, we have here all shutters. We're going to select the open window covering action and save the block. 
Now, in case it's not between seven in the morning and seven in the evening, let's close the blinds. Create a new action. Select change device state, select our device, all shutters, select the action, close. That's it. So now if the time is between seven in the morning and seven in the evening, our automation will open the blinds, otherwise it's going to close the blinds. Now let's wait for five minutes. We're going to add now the wait block. We need to enter the number of seconds to wait. We can here also enter the formula. So let's enter five times 60 seconds. Now let's drag from the action close to the wait block. That's it. So now if we open or close the blinds, we're in both cases going to wait five minutes. Okay, now that we waited for five minutes and we've left the house, we probably locked the door, but just in case, let's make sure. Let's add another block, an action block. Now we select the garage door, door lock, and we select the action lock state, lock. And just to be sure, let's also add to turn off the sauna just in case. In this case, let's drive directly to the KNX bus. So select read or write KNX group address. We select the right group address. Select the TP bus. Select DPT1. Let's find the group address for the sauna. Go on the sauna on off. And let's write false to turn it off. Save. So to review, when we receive the group address 001, we're going to turn off all lights and turn off all non-essential sockets. We're going to check the time is between seven in the morning and seven in the evening. If it's between this limit, we're going to open the shutters. In case it's not, we're going to close the shutters. We're going to wait five minutes to make sure we leave the house. And we're going to make sure the door lock is locked and the sauna is off. So with a couple of clicks, we create a pretty complex automation already. And the last step is to just simply enable the automation. That's it. Now that we've created the automation, it's also important to know when exactly it ran, why it ran, and if there's any errors. If we exit the editor, and go under run history, we can see exactly when the automation ran, if it was successful or not. And in case there's any problems, we can also check the logs. We can here select the date range, which automation, if it ran successfully or not, and if there's any errors. With this, we can be very confident that our automation is working as intended. Also, when the automation is running, they'll be visible under the running section. Oftentimes, we want to reuse an automation between different projects or within the same project. We made this very simple. Here we have a bit more complex automation for controlling the kitchen lights. Depending on the time of day, if there's motion detected, we'll set the color light to a specific brightness. Let's say that we want to use the same automation for the living room. All we have to do is go here to duplicate the automation. Let's rename it to living room. And replace device. Here we're going to replace the color light from the kitchen with the color light in the living room. Save and the occupancy sensor from the kitchen with the occupancy sensor in the living room. And that's it. We just use the same automation for a different room. Now in the case when we want to use an automation from a different project or 
a colleague sends uh, automation they created, or even if the community has created an automation with a community template, we can import this automation. Once we import the external automation, we can see here there are several errors. We need to replace the devices in the imported automation with our own. So let's replace here the kitchen light with our dining room light. And the occupancy sensor. And let's also rename the automation. And that's it. So we used right now an automation that was created for a different project within our new project. Now that we demonstrated how we can import different automations from different projects, let's create a new automation where I'm going to show you the different types of blocks and the different options we have to play around with. Every automation starts with a trigger. Triggers are what triggers the automation. Let's look at the trigger block. You add a trigger and you select the trigger type. We have different trigger types, time and day, device change, or data received from KNX. Let's look at the time and date option. Here you select when you want the automation to run. You can select during the week at a specific date or at an interval every month, every hour, every minute, or every couple of seconds. Let's look at the during the week option. Let's select here that we want this automation to run on the weekdays at seven in the morning. What's really nice is that we can also see when exactly is the next time the automation will run. Let's look also at the option device change. When you select the trigger type device change, the automation will trigger once, once the device changes state. So let's say when a light turns on or if a humidity sensor sends a certain value. Let's select a device, dim light. Here we can listen to different changes of this device. In this particular case with the dimming light, we can listen for the on-off value or the level. Let's select on-off. The last option is the triggered type data received from KNX. With the data received from KNX, we can trigger the automation when a certain group address is received by the one home server. We select the gateway and the data point type. This data can afterwards be used in the automation. And we select the group address. Now that we have three different triggers, any of these triggers will trigger the automation. Now let's look at the condition block. With the condition block, you can have multiple conditions. Let's create the first one. On the left side, you can perform simple math operations, let's say five times 60, or you can use any data available in this automation. You click insert dynamic data. You can see everything that's available either from the previous block that's it from the triggers, from the system, like the system time, or any different devices state. Let's select the system time, and let's select the hour, and let's check that the hour is greater than four. This can be our first condition. And of course, we can then join these with and and or. Also, we can define if an error occurs in the condition block. An error can occur if, for example, the device is offline or if the device doesn't exist anymore. We have multiple different ways of handling it. If we select handle and save the block, you can see that you can here then define your logic to handle what happens if the condition fails. That's the condition block. Now let's look at the 
weight block. The weight block is quite simple. It waits, it pauses the execution of the automation. You can define the time to wait in seconds, of course, using also formula input is possible. That's the weight block. Now let's look at the action block. All actions executed in a block are run simultaneously, which means if you want to turn on 30 lights simultaneously, all you have to do is select them in the one action block. Let's change the brightness value of a light. Click Add. For the action type, select Change Device State. Let's find light, dimming light from the bathroom, and let's change the level. Here we can select the level directly, or we can calculate dynamically based on the current value. Let's try doing that. Insert dynamic data, select the light, and we select the current level. plus 10. Update. And now this action will trigger to set the brightness of the bathroom light plus 10. In case an error occurs, which might be very important when handling multiple devices, you can of course select what type of handling you want to perform. You can continue or you can abort the automation or even handle the error. An error can occur, for example, if a device is unreachable or if a device doesn't exist anymore. You can also select multiple devices when creating an action. Let's select to turn off all lights. Click Add. Action type change device state. We find a light, main light. Turn it off. And then we have here the shortcut section. You can select multiple devices to perform this action. Let's say all sockets and lights in the bathroom. Save, update, and now all these devices are going to turn off in this action block. It's also possible to read or write group addresses in the action block. Let's add an action type read or write Kinex group address. It's possible to read a group address or to write a group address. The results of these actions can be later used in the automation. Let's read a group address. We select the gateway, the data volume type, and the group address. That's it for the action block. When designing the automation module, we made it possible to use all the data that's available inside the automation. When creating a block, whenever you see this symbol, the X symbol, it's possible to insert dynamic data, which means you can either perform a formula calculation, let's say five times three, or you can use the data inside the system. For example, a device's state or different variables from past blocks. Here are some results from the previous blocks. Let's look at the device event group address triggered. Here we can see the value, the previous value of the group address and so on. In the system, it's possible to take the system time. And you can also select a device's state. For example, in the light sensor example, the brightness. With this, you have the most flexibility when creating your automation. KNX is very important to us, which is why when we were designing the automation module, we integrated KNX very closely to the system. Let's create an automation where we use KNX extensively. We're going to react to the motion of a device and then sync the light status between two different lights. Let's begin. Here, let's select first the trigger the trigger type, select data received from KNX. Listen for changes, group address telegram. Let's select the TP bus, data point type Boolean, and select the group address.
and that's our trigger. Now let's select the condition block. And let's use the value of the group address telegram to react differently. We select the result from the previous block, from the trigger, and we select the value. If the collision is true, let's sync the status of a light with another light. Let's add an action block. And for the action, let's select the action type read or write canid group address. Perform a group value read. Select the TP bus. Data point type boolean. And let's read the group address. It's rooms lights on off status. Update. Save. Now we'll perform a group value read and we can use it in the next block the result. Let's create a new action block. For the action type, select read or write canic group address. For the action write group address to the TP bus, data point type boolean. And here for the group address, we'll write it to another group address for the bathroom lights on off. For the value, we're going to use the result of our group value read from the previous block. So here in this automation now, we can see that we use the t1.value. t1 means trigger one. So here we read the trigger one value and based on this, perform the calculation for the condition. Afterwards, we perform a group value read to the group address 01111. And we can see it, we use the value in the next block. a1.read group address means action one from the previous block. This way, you can use values throughout the automation to your liking. If you need a certain data point type, tell us and we'll add it. This is only the beginning for the automation module. In the later versions, we're going to add a simulator so that you can play around with automations with simulated devices. Afterwards, when we're going to integrate Matter Accessories, you'll be able to play around with Matter Accessories and Kinex devices in the automation module as a whole. After that, it really depends on you guys. If you need something, tell us and we'll look into adding it. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.